girls, my name's Dan. Welcome to The Forge. In this episode of Trust Me, I am a blacksmith. We're gonna be making this set of tongs here and I'll be explaining why I think this is a great option if you are a beginner blacksmith. As someone who makes tools quite a lot, I get asked often what kind of tongs I think are the best ones for a beginner. Um, and this is a varied question and it has lots of different answers. It genuinely depends on what you want to make. More often than not, I'll ask people what are you trying to make to try and give them that answer. But in this episode, what we're gonna be trying to do is make a pair of tongs that can do quite a lot of different jobs, hold quite a lot of different types of stock, relatively easy to make and quite comfortable to use. I'm so. using mild steel for this project. Uh, I've got myself a piece of 25 square, which I've drawn down to 25 by 20, which is inch by three quarters. Um, you could do this out of the 20, it's just a bit more forging. I'm using this size stock for one half because I would like a slightly larger nib. Distance from the end of the material to my centre dot mark, which is 130 millimetres or five inches and an eighth. We're gonna draw this down and uh, turn this into the same flat bar as our other half of the tongue. Find my centre dot. Place that in front of the fullers. I'm going to fuller in on the longest sides. And then I'm going to draw this down to 10 by 25, 8 by 1 inch. 3 8 sorry, by 1 inch. I'm going to start back where we've made our set down. And basically I'm going to work back at an angle. Okay, to draw this material, I'm going to come over to the thick, round side of my hammer. I work across the very end, then flip it, and just behind where I've just forged, I'm going to keep repeating that. So I've marked 50 millimetres or two inches from the double set down that we put in and I'm going to use this round fuller that we used in the pos tong video, I'll leave a link in the description. We're going to put a fuller in here and then also a fuller in here. Okay, other than forging or drawing out the material, this bit here can be a bit tricky and it's probably the hardest bit. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to the far side of the anvil to start with and we're going to start putting a bit of a taper in on one side. And then we're going to come to the near side of the anvil. And do exactly the same. Flatten the material out so that it's the same width as the original stock, and then get everything back into line. So you should end up with a triangle in the center. And same again, just a little bit more of a close up. I'm going to come to the far side of the anvil. I'm going to set that material into a triangle on the near side, my side. Flatten everything out. So that you have 
a triangle in the center. Okay, then we're gonna turn the triangle up on end. I'm gonna take the round side of the hammer to start with at least anyway. Then forge that triangle down. Square side this time. Square side, flat side. Side still, and I'm just forging in the centre. Walking up towards uh, those set downs. And then when everything's looking all smart and nice and tidy, I just like to take the corners off. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can do it over the corner of your handle. So, or you can use a set block, like this one here, and does exactly the same thing. And then from this set down here, we're gonna measure back about 25 mil, so basically a cube of material. Center dot mark again. And this will become our hinge plate. And just briefly, uh, a lot like before, I'm just going to work, flip it over, 180, and just move up the material. I'm using the round side of my hammer, I'm just going to run down the material there, and then on the face of the anvil, I'm just going to flatten this material back out. If everything went well, you should have two pairs of tongs or blanks that look pretty much the same, except from this half has the much larger nib on the end. Um, it's an inch and a quarter uh, that I cut off here, or 30 millimeters. And um, it doesn't matter about the reins and everything yet. We're just gonna set up the actual bows, or the bits that I call the bow at least anyway. So that's our tong there. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the offset and get these looking nice and tidy. First things first, I'm just going to hook 
the edge of the nib or the bow part over the edge of the anvil and I'm just going to push that piece down and over ever so slightly um, this will become clear as we start to shape the actual um, hinge plate up um, but what we need to do is we just need to push that material over ever so slightly. A rounding hammer is quite nice for that. Um, you can get in there and push that over quite nicely. And then you want to get a really nice heat on your hinge plate area. I'm going to hold this on the heel of my anvil. You can do this on the side of your anvil. I'm doing it here just to show you what I'm trying to do. And I'm going to flatten that down until both the, the hammer face comes in contact with both the edge of the nib uh, the ed yeah, or the start of this bow part starts to lodging up, change the shape of the hinge plate. I'm going to flatten that down. I'm just going to knock that forward a little bit. And then I'm just going to round this back end up. Like so. And then I'm just going to grab the nib section in the vise. I should have set this up a bit better. I'm just going to grab that nib in the vise and then I'm going to bend it back. And as I'm bending it back, I'm just going to use a hammer just to create quite a tidy little offset in the end there. And then if you can find something to use as a set hammer or a set hammer if you've got one. You want to use that just to tidy up whatever nice edge that you may or may not have created. Obviously if you had a striker or a power hammer or something like that, this would be a hell of a lot easier. And then hopefully, with a bit of fiddling, and a little bit of uh, jiggly pokery, you should have a nice big flat nib.
Okay, and here they are. These came out quite nicely. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about why I've done certain things and how they provide that flexibility and comfort. Um, and I want to show you what it can hold. Um, but a lot of work's gone into this video and getting to here because there's a couple of different varieties of these. I also made a Poztong Plus as well, which is this set here. It's almost exactly the same, except from it's in the Poztong style. Now, I might put this video up, I'm not 100% sure, but this kind of got a little bit rejected because of the fact that it's not... You'll see in a minute, I'll explain in a second. If you're just getting into blacksmithing, I don't believe that you need to be holding exceptionally large, large pieces of material. However, you do need a pair of tongs that is A, reasonably reliable, B, holds pretty well, and C, comfortable to use. And these tongs should do that job. Now, I'm not gonna say that these tongs can hold anything over 16 square. They can, they're just not gonna do it very well. However, what they do do is they hold next to nothing really well as well. Okay, so let's have a look. These were set up to hold 16 square. Now, I say that they're 16 square because we've got about as much as you might want to hold comfortably with a pair of tongs. Now, they're not they're not open wide, but they're not closed. They're not. Yeah, they're sort of middle of the road of max, I would suggest. But they do hold very nice. Now the perfect scenario would be that we could hold a piece of paper in under here but because of the way that the uh, nibs are set up that's not 100% possible but I have this stick welding rod here. This is 1.6 mil rod which is a 16th of an inch and if I get that in there like so you can see that I can now grab that 16th of an inch in the set of tongs. Now that is incredible. That's pretty much 15 mil of 15 millimeters of grabbiness that I've got there. Which is but the other things that this does really nicely is it'll hold angle iron and you can hold flat bar as well. Now I would suggest if you're going to hold flat bar you need to push it right to the back to the hinge plate but it will hold flat bar and it'll hold flat bar this way as well. So Crystal made a custom order and I'm really, really happy to try and fulfill orders which have quite specific parameters. She asked for a smaller hammer, two and a half pound hammer, and she wanted it to be um, a circle, square, styly one, a bit like the Brian Brazil style ones. So hopefully I managed to achieve that for her. So this is your hammer, got a nice wedge in there and everything. I'm really pleased with this, came out really lovely. And then also, I'm gonna send her the pos tongs that we made initially. Again, not my favorite pair of tongs. These need to clean them up before they leave. And also, I made her a set these as well. Not quite what she asked for. I'm not 100% happy with the tongs that I have made for her. Um, I could have done a better job, but this is the learning curve. This is the learning Quickly, post. before I finish the video off, I just wanted to say that this is the very first set of tongs that I made initially that I was gonna send. Uh, to Crystal, but um, I really wasn't happy with these and I didn't feel like they fulfilled the job uh, or description that she'd asked for. She wanted the really small reins, but the reins that taper like this are a bit awkward to hold sometimes. The nibs didn't close small enough, like a variety of problems. Like I said, not very happy with the pos tongs. I could have done better with those. And then these bolts here, these are pretty much where I want them to be. I've got another idea to make these slightly differently. Um, might see that in an up and coming video. And I do have some laser cut blanks for the pos tongs coming as well. So there'll be some more of this stuff to come. Okay, um, it's a couple of days later. You can probably tell by my haircut. <laughs> but I've been living with these and I've been using the pos tong plus variant um, and I like them. And I think they're good. And if you're gonna be using them to hold next to nothing up to about 20 square, three quarters of an inch square, they're okay. They're not a bad set of tongs. They're not perfect. There's a lot, there's a lot that they don't do that they could do, but they are an, a reasonable set of tongs. And because of that, I think I'm gonna make them to sell. But not yet, I'm gonna make them in the new year. And the reasons for that are twofold. The first reason is, I'm not happy with the design just as yet. I, this could be better, it could be easier to make. So I'm gonna be working on that. I also wanna square away that pos tong version because I think that is an option. Um, but I'm very busy and as a consequence of doing the blacksmith's helpers and the channel picking up a little bit, 
I've become extremely busy and in order for me to keep up with everything, I'm going to have to close the shop at some point in order to make sure people are going to get their stuff for Christmas. Okay, if you want tools off the Etsy, you need to order them by the 6th of December, which is the first Sunday in December, because after that, I will be shutting shop. Um, so that I can do two things. I can catch up with everything. I want to go into next year with no orders. Um, the reason being, I think a clean slate is gonna be a good thing and I can be able to get my head straight over Christmas because I won't be worrying about things, but everything will be out and gone to the customer, which I really would like to have. And the second thing is, I want people to get stuff before Christmas and it's gonna take, if you're in the States, it's gonna take at least 12 days with COVID to get stuff to the people in America, especially over Christmas. So, if you are interested in stuff, get over to the Etsy and order it now. The sooner you order it, the further up the queue you'll be and the more likely you'll get your stuff. I am having trouble getting materials. I am having trouble keeping up with the amount of work, but I think this is a practical way of, anyway, I'm also gonna be cutting the videos down a bit. So hopefully November, there'll be a couple of videos coming out, but there'll probably only be one or two and then a Christmas special. So that's it. I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are a subscriber, why not ring that bell for notifications? It tells you every time I make a video. I try to make videos as often as possible. I normally make one a week, sometimes a few more, sometimes a few less. Uh, and I think it's going to get even less than that <laughs> in a minute. Um, however, um, if you want to support the channel, there's a few ways you can do that. Drop down into the comment box and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the video. Tell me what you thought of the tongs. Tell me what experience you've had with all rounder tongs, so on and so forth. I love hearing from people. I quite often learn a lot from the uh, comment section and constructive criticism is always welcome. You could also head to the description where you'll find some links. One of the links is to my Instagram. This is a great way to see what's going on behind the scenes, projects that are being worked on as I go along with them, and also the grid where I post final images of some of the stuff we've made, stuff that's up on the Etsy and all that stuff. And if you really want to get hold of me, it's probably the easiest way to get hold of me. You can DM me there, um, ask me questions, just say hello, all that good stuff. So if you are interested in getting hold of me, that is a great way. There's also a link to my Etsy. The Etsy is a great way to support the channel because you're basically buying something made by these hands in this workshop, which you get to have and use at your forge at home. There's pretty much everything that you could want over there. I am looking to expand it somewhat. I did use to sell block brushes. There will be block brushes coming back. There's more laser cut stuff. So there's some awesome stuff over there. Everything from hammers, tongs, stocks, and merchandise. So if you want to support me, that's a great way to do it. I'm going to leave the video there. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to leave a link up here to a video YouTube thinks is best for you. This one down here is a link to a video uh, that was most recently posted. This one here is uh, the previous Paul's Tong video. And this one here is the subscribe button. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye.